General Gowan, you've accepted in good faith Colonel Effiong's uh, order to his troops to lay down their arms. Now, is this going to be enough to end the fighting? Are you, are you confident that federal troops will deal gently with the defeated? I'm absolutely confident and sure of that, as I'm sure of myself. This operational conduct was given to the troops almost at the very beginning of the operations. And I know that this has been explained to them right from the beginning, from their recruit training right uh, to the very moment. And we have issued instructions to the uh, field commanders and the field troops to ensure that in victory there is magnanimity and to ensure that we do not do anything which will tarnish in our good image and our good name. Even though, in fact, you know, the, uh, some portion of the world do not believe or trust us. But I think we want to prove to the world that we are men of our own word. We can rest assured that uh, what if I have said and uh, what, I, what uh, the instruction we have given them, I'm quite convinced that it is sufficient for them to do just what if we tell them. There is control, I can assure you, and there is loyalty and there is dis uh, discipline in the Nigerian armed forces. Is the fighting now at an end? I can really say so. Uh, I'm absolutely sure of that, unless, as I've said, unless uh, we are provoked, unless, of course, our troops are, uh, you know, are fired at. And I'm absolutely convinced they will not fire at anyone, they will not shoot at anybody, unless, in fact, if they are attacked. Uh, probably, you may probably hear reports of that, uh, but I can, uh, you can rest assured, it will not uh, you know, have been started by the federal uh, in the government troops. You didn't in your own broadcast, uh, in reply to Colonel Effiong's, take up his, one of his main points, the question of negotiations uh, with you. Now, are you going to negotiate with them, or are you going to demand a complete and abject surrender? Um, well, if you probably uh, notice in my address, I have not closed, in fact, in the door for uh, us meeting. Uh, I'm quite convinced that we'll be able to arrange a meeting, and I hope uh, you know, they will uh, you know, accept it in good faith, and let's really get on with the job. As I have always said, I think the problem of this country can only be resolved in its entirety between us Nigerians. I don't think any outsider can really do it for us. Otherwise, the outsider will always be the third party to uh, come and re resolve our problems for us. But if we do it ourselves, I'm quite convinced it will be the best way of resolving our problems once and for all. And I hope and trust that this is the spirit with which, in fact, the meeting will take place. Why do you think Ajoku left Biafra? Was it because he was a coward? <laughs> Was it because he felt that he stood in the way of a settlement? <laughs> well, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, as mine. Uh, the foreign press that seemed to know him better than, uh, th than we do, than I do, seemed to give him all sort of excellent quality, uh, so much above in fact, the rest of us. Ojuku, the gallant chap who said, I will fight to the last, uh, last man, and I will be the last one you know, to, uh, you know, that will fall. What a pity. How are the mighty fallen? And in such a cowardly way. If he has done a Hitler, probably we could have thought in terms of he's at least a man of courage. He didn't I... do a Hitler. Hitler took a poison, died, and ordered his body to be, uh, you know, to be burned up. At least because he, had, uh, you know, he knew what he has done. Ojuku ran away and left this poor people that he has led into such uh, uh, you know, suffering such an uh, uh, in abject pos in a position, just left them. And now probably, because with the money he has amassed outside, I suppose that he will go and live in, uh, you know, in, uh, in joy and plenty. Well, I hope he will enjoy the rest of his life. I hope his conscience will, uh, you know, you know, will allow him to rest. God knows. If at all, if I'm an, uh, 
those who are supporting Ojuku. Allow him to really get away with what he has done to his people, to Nigeria, to Africa. Then I think they need to examine their conscience. And honestly, I have got no faith in such people. You've now inherited the responsibility for an untold number of new refugees, many of them starving. Are you going to allow organizations that have been helping Biafra, like Joint Church Aid, to continue flying in supplies under your supervision? As you know me, I always tell what I feel. Are they not the very people that really defied it and spit on our face? and told us that we can go to hell, we can do our worst, we can shoot down these aircraft, and that will be the world opinion against us. And they mounted all sort of propaganda, evil propaganda against us. Joint church aid and the such, really. They are the ones that helped Ojuku to really continue all this uh, uh, recalcitrancy. They are the ones that have given Ojuku the moral support and the financial support to be able to continue uh, killing those people. It is they who have got to examine their conscience. They would not be accepted. Do you really you. think that? Uh, do you really think that Nigerians will really accept such people who have really been uh, uh, party to uh, uh, you know the lives that we have lost in this country? Let them keep their blood money. Let them keep their blood uh, uh, relief supply, etc. We don't want it. We will do it ourselves. And I want to assure you this. We will do it. Nigerians, this is a challenge for us. And we will do it. You can rest assured that. Now, those people, they might as well rest assured. Uh, you know, they can rest and sort of know that we do not want their assistance. We do not want their help. We do not want it. They can keep it. When we told them to do things in, uh, uh, you know, properly, so that we can really end the suffering of these people, really at a, uh, a much, much earlier on, what did they do? They defied us. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I do not, in fact, wish to have anything to do with them. Thirty months of war are now at an end. As both the head of state and head of the armed forces, what are your feelings today? Well. Honestly, it's a mixed feeling. Greatest joy and happiness that the suffering of the innocent people, especially within the secessionist enclave, that suffering, we can say, is almost come to an end. Mixed feeling, second, uh, the other feeling I have is that we've got a very big and gigant uh, gigantic task before us. I think we are now in the second stage of our, uh, you know, of uh, you know, of the war. You've talked about the two races you've been running. The first, the war, which you've now won. Secondly, the race to secure the confidence of the Igbos again to reintegrate them into Nigerian society. Now, how are you going to be able to do that? Well, as far as I'm concerned, right from the beginning of these operations. We've never taken the Igbos as enemies, as Ojuku has made them to believe and has made the world to believe. As far as I'm concerned, the Igbos will be treated as an equal citizen in this country. There will be no second-rate citizens in Nigeria unless by their own behavior and performance. And this applies to any Nigerian whatsoever. The head and the heart is the only uh, yardstick which can judge who will be a second-rate citizen. Therefore, the Igbos have got nothing to be afraid of. They can rest assured that they have got a part to play in rebuilding the new Nigeria which has just been born. Now, let them come. Let them join hands with us, wherever they are. And I appeal to them, the Igbos at home, in areas now being liberated, to Igbos abroad, to Igbos everywhere, not to listen to the propaganda of foreign press or propaganda of people who really do not care for their you know, welfare. The only thing is to sort of see that they continue to resist 
or to continue to cause trouble and continue to cause uh, and continue to suffer without really bothering about their own fate, except to praise them uh, wishy, -wa uh, wishy washingly. Uh, I don't know for what purpose. So the Igbos have got nothing to be afraid uh, as far as we are concerned. Let them come home. Let them return to the fold. I have given them my word of honor. There will be amnesty for anyone who cares to come back. And with that, I'm quite convinced if they're prepared you know, to play their part, to play you know, their role properly, I think we can rebuild a new Nigeria where no man will be oppressed. General, you're widely believed, known, to be a man without political ambitions yourself. Now the war's over, you've promised in the past to reintroduce civilian government again. If I can ask you a personal question, how do you see the future for yourself now? Well, I'll continue to give uh, my best to the nation until we're able to resolve uh, most of our immediate problems. Uh, problem of uh, uh, winning the heart, reconciliation, and at least to see the reconstruction beginning and going you know, properly. And then I hope if I will be in a position to get, if I'm in the uh, Constituent Assembly, which I have promised to the nation, going. And really everything taking a proper shape. Now, whatever duty I'm called upon you know, to do, I will do it, continue to do it to the best of my ability in the interest of this nation and the interest of the people of this country. But as far as the political ambition is concerned, I can assure you, my, uh, uh, you know, what I have said in the past you know, still stands. I have got no political ambition. I don't think I will fit in as a politician. Do I look like one? Could you go back to being a simple soldier? Absolutely. That is what I have been all the time. Do I look a different man that I have been right from the beginning as a, you know, as a soldier?